So, when the Zadoes wakes up in the middle of the night, <clears throat> and remember, she is pondering the hardcore prospect of abdicating her Maytar throne in Chitral, and beloved Mustush, embraced by that snow capped mountain Tyric Myrrh, weighed against what? Traveling into flatland? Fanatical? Die. Parched desert, great salt desert of Iran, materialistic Europe, Zado moans. Oh, wow, hassling with Europe. It's too much, man. And her courage to get her teeth fixed in London, it just oozes out of the bottom of her feet, yeah. And uh, does a little curly cue at the end of her Aladdin slippers and just flips right off into nowhere. Yeah, queen of hashish smuggler. Yeah, limps to the windowsill. For some evening breeze, she looks out. Oh, the Hari River Valley. Uh, it just extends. Uh, what? There's nowhere to hide around here. Too flat. Well, she takes a deep breath and backs away from any commitment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Two, uh, no sudden movement to the Iran border. Uh uh. And she takes refuge in profound and delicious indecisiveness. Yeah, about a future. Then she falls into a deep sleep. Well, <clears throat> after a few days of uh, Bay's generous uh, Patan hospitality, her shoulder wound, hmm, healing remarkably well. Doesn't even need that turban sling anymore. And yet, yeah, homesickness mm -hmm, for King Sharif, her king, lover. Um, Victorian Palace, so fun to live in a Victorian time warp in the Himalayas. Uh, well, she has a word with Bay. She goes downstairs and says, Look, Bay, could you possibly put um, a few good-looking men in my room? I'm alone there. Bay understands, yeah. As he savors the shot of strong whiskey. Well, that evening, uh, the Kandahar bus comes in. I mean, there is only one bus a day uh, from Kandahar. And uh, the Zada, well, she hears a heavy clomping coming down the corridor toward her Shamde Hashish. Nazim parts the beaded curtain in the arched mud doorway, and an Australian who calls himself uh, Aussie uh, from the heartland desert of Alice Spring Springs, he hesitantly peers in. He wonders. He says, look, uh, you know that bloke with the turban downstairs? He says, this here is the free missionary room for people who, you know, are out of money. Uh, Okay, if I stay in here with you, mate? Oh. The Zadoes answers, oh, so graciously, of course. This is the free overflow room. Belongs to anybody. You can put your sleeping bag, like, wherever you wish. Uh, well, she notices, uh, the Aussie packing a lot of gear. Oh, a guitar without a case. And that rucksack, I mean, it's got a metal frame. And it's got a slipping bag roped up on the top, way above his head. Uh, Cumbers in sight, hitchhiking down the road. Heavy construction boots. Steel toes. No socks. Oh, hairy legs. Uh, bulging calves. Uh, 
well, that he developed because he plays uh, hardcore rugby and he leads the charging forward pack. No protective padding. Yeah, oh, hairy legs. Uh, go up into uh, cut off shorts and when Ozzy bends over to unroll his sleeping bag, oh, the crack in his ass, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, he catches uh, uh, sight of the Zadu S checking him out uh, and he, he reacts defensively. Look, mate, this is bush gear. Oh, okay. Bushy beard of the Australian. Uh, conveniently doubles as a bib as he wolfs down uh, his food as, as much as he can get his hands on. Yeah, and um, what? Both his front teeth ain't there? Double wide gap in the front? Terrifies the delicate Zaduas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, he talks about where he comes from. Yeah, back home in Alice, mate, I take six packs of Fosters down to the creeks. You know, hang out with the Abos down there around their campfires. No worries about that, mate. Yeah, Billy Bongs, Crocodiles. Um... And I've done my share of gin jockeying, too. Gin jockeying? Oh, getting it on sexually with average gin, 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 ginnies? Gin jockeying? Okay. Wow, what a character, huh?